Good evening, hyperspinners. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up PPSSPP uh, emulator and how to set up the PlayStation Portable uh, system wheel. Get ready. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, the PPSSPP emulator. And first things uh, first, you're going to go to ppsspp.org. And this is going to be where the latest uh, emulator uh, download is. And this is still in development, uh, but it has gone a long way. You can play virtually anything on here and it looks amazing. So the latest that I'm using is 1.6.3. And you just download uh, by pressing this button here. And once you've done that, you're gonna save the file down and we're going to extract that in our emulators folder, uh, which you can see is in our hyperspin root folder, emulators. And then I've, I've gotten in a bad habit. I've been putting the version of the emulator uh, within the folder name. I would recommend just putting the emulator name itself because some of these are updated uh, very frequently. So for what it's worth, uh, mine says version 1.1, but that was uh, some time ago. And you can see the most recent update was just uh, a few months ago. So once you've extracted the file in your emulators folder, you'll see your setup look like this. And uh, that's all there is to it. And then once you uh, are ready, you're gonna double click on one of these XE files. Uh, I believe it does not matter which one you are selecting. In terms of which one that I've got set up, I'm, I'm using the Windows 64 version. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And I've already got it open. So this is what you're gonna see. And you've got a slew of options here, but really all that matters is off to the right here. We've got load, settings, and credits. This one's uh, pretty easy to set up here, but I'll kind of scroll over the top here to uh, kind of talk through some of this stuff. So under debug, I've got these two items uh, selected. Uh, I believe that comes by default. Also under game settings, I've just got enable sound uh, in this uh, tab here. You're gonna see all of these uh, are based on the settings that we will be talking about, but I'll just kind of scroll over here so you can quickly see what I've got here. And this is what's going to mirror that settings button that we're about to click. Uh, this emulator is fairly uh, easy to set up and it is based on your setup guys. So depends on the graphic card that you're using. Um, the recommendation is to use uh, Vulkan uh, instead of uh, Direct 3D of any type, but it all depends on the system that you have and it will all work fine. It's just uh, you know how smooth you want this thing running. So we're almost done here. So those are all the settings that we're gonna be selecting. You can also get to settings by clicking more settings here. You can also get to the control uh, settings by clicking control mapping. But I like everything pretty simple. So we're just gonna go straight to settings over here. You're gonna see this uh, UI here. We've got the uh, sections that we're gonna be looking at on the side there. And then the selections of uh, what we are just looking at basically. So I've got Vulkan set up. I've got the simulate block transfer uh, effects on. Maybe we'll go a little slower here. Uh, we've got frame skipping on to one, auto skip, prevent uh, the first person shooter from exceeding 60 uh, frames per second. Uh, let's see. So there's really not a whole lot of options that we're gonna be changing here. And you can select on a per game basis, all of these settings. You can just uh, click on the game that will show up on the uh, main menu screen. And you can just uh, right click it and uh, select settings and you'll get these exact options uh, for that specific game. So if you don't like how this is working globally with these settings, 
you can go ahead and change those. So frames per second counter, I've got set to none. And that's it on the uh, graphic settings. So that is based on your settings. Again, uh, Vulcan is going to be the uh, gold star here if uh, your system can support it. Under audio, I've got enable sound. I've got the global set to 10 and that's it. So next we've got controls. So we've got control mapping, which is uh, what we're going to select to map our controls. Uh, but here, let's just double check to see if there's anything here. We got pause menu button. So this is all going to be selected in our mapping here. Uh, there's the dead zone radius. So again, a lot of this is already default. So you're not going to have to mess with any of that. So we're going to go straight up to the top. We're going to click control mapping. And then you're going to see the options here. So these are all of the items that we're going to be mapping. So I feel like when you first open this up, your 360 and pad one will already be set. Uh, but if not, then just simply plug in your 360 controller and then you push the pad up and then you basically push the button. So if you're using the Xbox 360 gamepad, then you're going to be pushing the up button there. Uh, but since uh, I've got a cabinet and uh, I've also got a control panel and a, a gamepad, everything's going to be mapped via Joy2 key. So take a look at my video about setting up Joy2 key, but I've already got that part set up. So with my D-pad for player one, up is up. So I just push the up arrow and it will close. And then you'll see the keyboard up button there. You'll do that for each one of these. You'll click on the button there and then you'll set up the controls. And so next you're selecting the button. So uh, zero is always my back button. That is O, X is H, uh, which is my X button always or uh, a button on other systems. Uh, square is always seven, triangle is always nine for me, but set this up on however uh, your setup is uh, going. So start is one, select is five, L, R, shift, Z. Again, you're just selecting the button and you're typing in the key that you want it to be. So once you get that all set up, you can set up the analog sticks as well uh, that can be, be emulated so you can still use your keyboard strokes using a uh, joy 2 key and the rapid fire uh, unthrottling i don't really use but you know you can certainly map those and um, you know have fun with that uh, save state and load state uh, i generally use f5 and f6 for all the systems so go ahead and set that up. And that's it. So this system is extremely easy to use. Uh, there's not a whole lot of setup, uh, no monkey business. So we're gonna keep on going here and we're almost done setting up this emulator. So networking, there's uh, nothing set here. And uh, tools, we've got, uh, yep, nothing set up there. And there you are. So the emulation, uh, we're using f uh, fast memory. We're using the IO thread. And let's see what else we're using. The memory stick inserted. And that's it guys. So you guys have just set up PPSSPP. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad. And what you'll find is if you go to the games uh, button here, you'll see the list of games that you have and then you can uh, right click those games and uh, change the settings if you will or you can uh, just double click and it'll open those games up to test and uh, yeah that's that's it guys so um, in terms of uh, other setup uh, there's not a whole lot going on here so we've already talked through all this if you click that more settings it's going to zip you back to where we were just at you don't need a map your uh, path to your games. Uh, Rocket Launcher is just going to launch them based on what you set up. So we're going to go ahead and close the emulator down now. 
and we're going to close the emulator folder, which is the one that we were just at. And all right, so now we can talk about media and the database, and then we'll set it up in Rocket Launcher. So you can find uh, the few files that the PSP uh, supports on Hyperspin. Uh, we've got uh, a couple main menu wheels, we've got a pointer and a system default wheel. I believe there's more media on the FTP server if you are a Platinum member on Hyperspin. So uh, take a look at that if uh, you have that, uh, that license. And in terms of the databases, if you go to Hyperlist, this is going to be a compilation of all the XMLs for all the systems. If you go down to PSP and you click uh, XML, you're going to place that file in your uh, Hyperspin database folder. You're going to go to Sony uh, PlayStation Portable. And this is with the assumption that you've already set up the, the system in HyperHQ. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So under HyperHQ, we're going to type in Sony PSP within the wizard here. So here we go. We're going to go to main menu wizard, push the plus sign. The uh, window will appear. You're going to type in Sony capital S PSP. Uh, PSP is capitalized. You're going to hit next and it's going to say congratulations. And what you're going to want to do is go to wheel settings. Then we're going to go to uh, Sony PSP. So now the hardest part is finding this for you guys. And we're going to keep going here. There we are. That wasn't so bad. And here are the settings that I've got for uh, the PSP. So we're going to use uh, Hyper Launcher. Uh, we're going to use Disable for PC. The execution, you're going to take that uh, folder that we just set up, the PC uh, PPSSPP folder under the Emulators folder. You're going to select the Windows 64 XE. The Game Path, you're going to basically go to your Emulators folder, your, your Game folder, and the System folder name. Your extensions are going to be ISO and CSO. And your line preview uh, command is hyperlaunch.exe, quotation Sony PSP, and ROM name. So next we're going to go to wheel settings. Nothing was set up there, but remember if you've customized any of this, you want the streamline across all systems. So make it the same as what you have done so far. So there's my settings there. Next we've got navigation themes. I always like the animated Default themes checked and reload backgrounds checked. And that's it guys. So you guys might have wheels only checked. I, I ensured everything was uh, you know, set up on my end where I've got the media so I don't have that checked. And other than that guys, you've got HyperHQ set up and you now have a Sony PSP uh, database folder. You've also got a media folder. So I'm going to go ahead and close HyperHQ out. And, you know, I, I can save that XML file that we were just talking about. So we'll talk about how to set up genres at a later video. But for now, you're going to have Sony PSP in there. And you're going to back out, back to Hyperspin. And you're almost done, guys. So next, we're going to go to Rocket Launcher. And we're going to go to global uh, at the top there. We're going to go to emulators. You're going to scroll down to PPSSPP. And uh, if you don't have that selected or if that's not showing up for you, you can easily just push the plus on the new emulator and it will open up a window that looks like this. And you'll just type in PPSSPP. You'll take the path of uh, the PPSSPP 64XE. You'll find that location. You'll put in ISO, pipe, and then CSO. And the module name is PPSSPP. So once you close that out, you've got everything set up on the global settings. And yeah, that's, that's it, guys. So what we're going to do is now go down to the system. 
And this will have displayed since you have set that up in HyperHQ. Then you're gonna see, uh, well, first we're gonna go to settings, just kind of make sure everything's kosher here. Looks like I hide the mouse, so I'm gonna select that to true. Everything else looks to be global with the exception of skip checks. So I'm gonna set that to false. In terms of fades, I've got everything set to global, so there are no issues with fade, well, at least for me. Then we go to emulators. We're gonna put in the game path uh, folder. You're gonna push that plus sign, find your game paths. And then your default emulator is gonna be PPSSPP. You're gonna click that magnifying glass and select that. And you can ignore what's down here. This doesn't matter. And we're gonna go to modules. And just to open up the notes to this module, uh, I select PPSSPP, hit the little pad of paper. Looks like there are no uh, extra notes to this. Makes things pretty easy. The compatibility list, uh, that's pretty helpful. Uh, not all the auto hotkey uh, notes have these. So that's, that's good. You can see the compatibility compatibility for your game in the emulator and we're going to go to the little paper icon with the looks like maybe a screwdriver or a USB I don't know so we're gonna uh, we're gonna click the edit global module settings and it looks like there's nothing set up here everything's uh, pretty vanilla here so you guys have just set up your second uh, emulator so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoy the emulator is still in development it does an excellent job so far uh, with all the games uh, can't even tell that it's still in development uh, other than you know new features along the way it, it runs great and uh, enjoy